Hello, hello. Can you hear me all right? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Well, to start at the beginning, you could say that the reason why Venice is where it is exactly because we have this interaction between the ocean and the rivers and the mountains and the hinterland. So I think that Venice is a, is a very good example of how the balance between the forces that threaten you and on the other way, the forces that sustain you, uh, has to be just exactly right. Better. The human search for meaning and the, hum and the importance of meaning for our cultural evolution. Earth systems, planetary systems, human systems, whether it's cultural or energy or agricultural or, or whatever, how they drive planetary systems. They're all interconnected and they feed back on each other. We can't see many of the things that our life causes other places on the planet. So very many of us um, live in a little bubble right around ourselves and we don't recognize that we're part, that we're interconnected, that we're connected to other things. Well, clearly our impact on nature and on the natural systems is driven by our desires and not by our needs. If we were only driven by needs, we would have a much, much less footprint on the planet. Venice is a really interesting example of where the, the human and the non-human are meeting, you know, with the water coming up through the canals and rising water tables and rocks eroding, yet at the same time that amazing historical venture to build a, a water city. Well, this is the time of reckoning, isn't it? This is You take a laguna, you have just uh, you know, basically some the little mud bank sitting in the middle of it, and some people decide to just make the most wonderful city in the earth out of this. And that is, you know, that shows you what humans are. <laughs> humans have these aspirations, and they are what brings us into trouble, but it's also those aspirations that will uh, get us out of the trouble again. Humans start by collaborating on things. We're, we're completely dependent on each other. We, none of us can survive alone, so we depend on our society. But more broadly than that, we depend on strangers, not just our family, not just our group, but strangers in other groups. We've been driven throughout human history since we evolved by this need and this impulse to harness as much energy as we can. We really need to ensure that other life on Earth can also survive. All comes from this one finite planet. Uh, we're pushing these systems to such a level that they're not going to be able to support. Culture is enormously important, and if we're going to have the, a new relationship, a better relationship with the world around us, we're going to have to be looking at changes in culture. And the big question, whether uh, we will kind of conquer over nature or whether nature will conquer over us, I think that uh, nature will always win, in the end, nature will win. I guess maybe the big philosophical question is, when does human activities end and where does nature begin? I think that uh, we are part of nature, and uh, the earlier we realize that nature, that's us, the better will our, our chances be to uh, extend our, our, our time as, uh, as civilizations on Earth. We should not preserve nature for the sake of nature, we should do it because it's important to us.